I'd spend a lot of time with my grandma uh, in the summers in Chicago, and uh, she uh, she got like three, four newspapers, and you know would. I would just be in awe of everything. I thought, wow, big city newspapers, I love it. Well, I knew since I was about uh, 10, 12 years old that I wanted to write, and journalism seemed like a, a natural fit for that. Then going to Marquette, I walk in onto campus like my first day and I have my meeting with my advisor. And it's George Reedy. He's the dean of the journalism school at that time, George Reedy being the press secretary for LBJ. We just sat and talked for two hours about journalism. I met a lot of fantastic professors, but also my fellow students were a total inspiration. I learned a lot from them. With some people, you just know. You just know they're going to end up doing great things. I felt that about Greg right away when we met at Marquette University as journalism students. He was already a full-blown, serious writer and editor, and he was a teenager. I applied at 100 newspapers uh, out of college. I got responses uh, from three, which indicated some level of interest. Everybody else told me to get lost. I didn't have enough experience. But I got a call from the Quad City Times in Davenport, Iowa to come out. I learned how to be a line editor at the at the Quad City Times. It was a great experience. I didn't know what I was doing. I had a lot of great mentors. I didn't realize it at the time, but now I appreciate it tremendously. So the day I got back from my honeymoon, I got the call from the Tribune that I was hired. So I went from Iowa to Chicago, which made my uh, my new wife very happy because she lived in Chicago, and we we're trying to figure out how we were going to negotiate that uh, you know three hour car ride. You know, landing the job at the Tribune it was a dream come true. It's a paper. Since I was a kid, uh, that I wanted to work for, based on my experiences in my grandma's house, reading those newspapers. A couple years later, when we were back in Chicago, traipsing through the clubs and the record stores, vinyl on this side, books on this side. We would go on record buying sprees and just listen to records, you know, and just talk about them and and have fun learning about new stuff. He was an open-eared fanatic and he was both an encyclopedia and a pathfinder. John knew about it and, and could tell you about it and get you excited about, oh, you gotta see this, oh, you gotta read this, you gotta hear this. And that influenced me in a great way. It was obvious that Greg's interest in music had fully morphed into a quasi-healthy obsession. You just knew that something good was going to happen with Greg and journalism and music. It had to happen. We make each other better. Uh, we're both good on our own, and as a team, we are even stronger. Sound Opinions has been a celebration of that. I still don't know how we got that gig, but man, we had fun, and we learned how to do it, do the job. And what we found was that talking about music is almost as much fun as writing about it. Again, it's never just our opinion about the art in front of us, the album or the concert. It is how it fits in the world, the greater context. I can't think of a better example of that for Greg than his spectacular biography of Mavis Staples. I'll take you there. One of my favorite moments that I've experienced with Greg is uh, I had emailed him and I said, Greg, can you call me? It's urgent. And he must have thought that I was crazy because what kind of an urgent call do you need to make to the library? But he did and I said, I have great news and I told him. I was just blown away when Jennifer called me and said, this is it. You're, you're the one book, one Chicago author. And I think for the first time since I knew him, he was speechless for just about a, a minute or so when I told him the good news. I couldn't believe it. I, had, I made her say it again just to make sure I got it right. And through that year, we had tens of thousands of readers who picked up the book and many more people who participated in all kinds of programs about Chicago music and civil rights. So it was a great year and one of my favorite times that I've worked with Greg through the years. Running through it all has been talent, passion, intelligence, energy, curiosity, and integrity. I mean, the Chicago Headline Club's Peter Lissigore Awards are you know, widely known in this region as the, the most respected awards for journalism in the Midwest. And, um, you know, the Lifetime Achievement Award is obviously a tremendous accomplishment. It almost feels like, uh, you know, an obituary or something. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that somebody thought uh, that I did something worthwhile with my career. And uh, I, I'm deeply honored, deeply flattered. It's turned out to be kind of the perfect career. I just knew it. You know, Greg, uh, congratulations. This is well-deserved. On behalf of everyone here at CPL, Greg, we raise our glass to you. Congratulations. I sure wish we could party together again, though.